It is truly unfortunate, but the U.S. was embarrassed on the world stage yesterday when Secretary of State Tony Blinken and the U.S. delegation was thoroughly mocked by China during their summit in Anchorage, Alaska. Let's take a look. Well, I think we thought too well of the United States. We thought that the U.S. side will follow the necessary diplomatic protocols. So for China, it was necessary that we make our position clear. So let me say here that in front of the Chinese side, the United States does not have the qualification to say that it wants to speak to China from a position of strength. Do we really going to get humiliated by China and uh, not stand up? Then he apologized. Now, despite the U.S. clearly falling behind so far under Biden, well, the president actually said he was, quote, proud of Blinken. Despite that tense exchange, followed by an apology, and get this, China accused the U.S. of foreign meddling and then accused us of human rights abuses while leaving out their own abuses against, you know, Muslims and those Tibetans and pro-democracy demonstrators in Hong Kong and so many other abuses. But it's just like I've been saying, the Biden administration, they are projecting weakness and foreign leaders are taking notice. What we saw yesterday from Secretary of State Blinken was quite frankly a complete, total, utter embarrassment. And it's not just China. As we've been talking about, Vladimir Putin appears well aware of the Biden administration and their weak stance against our biggest geopolitical foes. Why would Vladimir Putin immediately call for a debate with Joe Biden uh, and then say, I hope you feel better? What have I been saying? I know the corrupt media mob. I know big tech. I know Democrats. I know they shield Biden, ignore what is obvious to the entire world and more than half this country. Common sense Americans all across the country are seeing what I guess I'm one of the few people willing to say publicly. You compare Joe Biden to 2012, 2016. He looks extremely weak and frail and often confused, and he is struggling cognitively. It is undeniable at this point. This world has many evil actors, many hostile regimes, like Putin and Russia, the mullahs in Iran, President Xi, China, North Korea, Kim Jong-un. They're all studying Joe Biden. They're not taking or buying into the Democratic spin that, oh, the wind pushed Joe Biden uh, to fall three times today. What do you think they're really concluding? Here with more reaction, former Secretary of State and distinguished fellow at the Hudson Institute, Mike Pompeo, is with us. Mr. Secretary, good to see us. Let me start with the China exchange, because that exchange was, we were lectured by China. Our Secretary of State then apologized, rather than push back on all of their human rights abuses, which I find unconscionable. Sean, thanks for having me on. It was uh, embarrassing, as you said, but more importantly, it's dangerous. When uh, the Chinese Communist Party sees weakness, perceives weakness, they'll act just like you saw in that room in Anchorage yesterday. Uh, you've seen them now observe what the administration is doing with Iran. They've seen us get back into the Paris Climate Accords, an enormous gift to the Chinese Communist Party. They've seen us rejoin the World Health Organization, which gave the Chinese a complete pass for the Wuhan virus. When they sense this weakness, they'll act just as they did. They will bully us. They will take advantage of us. We need leadership uh, from the United States that demonstrates resolve with respect to the Chinese Communist Party the way President Trump and our team did. If we don't do that, Sean, we're in an awful lot of trouble. There is real risk. Weakness begets war. It begets hostility. And it appears that the Chinese Communist Party believes that this will, administration will be weak on China. Let me just put you in that position. Let's say this was you yesterday. I've known you a long time. You're a pretty tough guy. What would your response have been? Yeah, I would have called it out for exactly what it is. This idea somehow that America isn't a beacon of democracy around the world, that's just nonsense. And it is, it is crazy for them to make that attack. You know, they mentioned, too, you shouldn't forget, Sean, they mentioned Black Lives Matter as part of the reason they think American democracy is in decline. Those are, those are running buddies 
of Marxist Leninists all around the world. And so when they see a Democrat party that is so deeply tied to the Black Lives Matter movement, I think they sense that America may well be in decline. I would have made clear that America stands for protecting its own. I would have reiterated our views about America first. We would have talked about the greatness and the exceptionalism of our nation, and we would have called them out for what they did to the world with this virus that has destroyed millions of lives. We've lost millions of lives and billions of dollars worth of wealth. It is unacceptable that the administration didn't push back in that way. Remember, they put a travel ban in effect themselves. If you, live, if you were in Wuhan province, you were not allowed to travel to the rest of China. If you were in at any other part of China, you were not allowed to travel into the Wuhan province, back and forth. But you could travel around the world. They knew enough to protect their country at that time. Let's go to yesterday. And my interpretation is Vladimir Putin took a big shot at Joe Biden by basically saying, fine, you want to call me a killer? Let's debate it tomorrow. And, oh, I hope you're feeling better. How did you interpret it? I don't know how I did. Well, Sean, you, you can't imagine that something like that would have happened with President Trump and our administration. It's just, it's, it's implausible that Vladimir Putin would have acted in that way. What the Russians came to understand is that we were going to find places where we could work together when we could, so be it. But when we couldn't, when they acted in ways that were inconsistent with protecting America, we took real action, whether that was providing defensive systems to the Ukrainians or calling them out for their uh, abuses around the world. You know, they took Crimea under the Obama administration. It appears the Biden administration is going to be pretty weak, too. I think Vladimir Putin senses that. This is really dangerous for the United States. Yeah. Um, last question. Uh, I heard a rumor you might be going to Iowa, giving speeches in Iowa. I just heard it. I don't know. People make interpretations when they hear that people are making speeches to Iowa. Any anything you want to add to that? Uh, sure. I'm I'm happy. I'm going to Iowa. I'm going to campaign on, <laughs> on behalf of uh, Congresswoman out there. It's going to be a lot yeah. of fun. It'll be good work. I'm going to Nebraska and Texas too. It'll be a lot of fun, Sean. The conservative movement matters to me. I'm going to keep working at it. Uh, I have no doubt that there, we have some really strong conservative voices like yours, and uh, you'll be playing an important part in, in getting the country back on track after the mess is left uh, by this administration. Mr. Secretary, thank you.